Hey, what's up students? We're gonna try something a little bit different here. I do not have the resources to print the notes out and do them on paper. So we're gonna try a little thing here. I've copied some things onto a PowerPoint presentation. So I'm going to try to physically type out some answers to some of our math problems. Anyway, this is problem number one on page 47 from the textbook. Again, this is a screenshot of the textbook. I'm gonna type on this. Please don't type on your textbook. I guess you can't really do that. We're talking about this thing called the distributive property and how you handle the distributive property is, first of all, you're gonna see a number sticking to the outside of some brackets or like this, you could see a number sticking to the back end of the brackets. Here's what happens. This one number on the outside needs to multiply everything on the inside. So you gotta multiply you and then you gotta multiply you. So as you can see, the book does a great job of this. It goes three times X and three times eight. One thing times two things, this group of two, one things times two things is gonna be two multiplications. Even if it's on the back end, it still is going to multiply this way. So the negative seven is gonna multiply, see I keep doing like a little loop here. I kinda of have this thing called the loop-de-loop -loop method. You'll see more of this um, on the skill check videos. I just can't really physically draw at least not prettily on this right here. So uh, negative seven times u is gonna be a negative 35b and the negative seven times, careful, a negative four would make a positive 28. So we'll talk more about how to deal with negatives. Um, but uh, if everything's positive, nothing really changes, but if you're multiplying in a negative, things on the inside must become the opposite. Okay, so let's try to actually do some math here. See if I can type. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to do the got it questions here. So I would like you to copy them down. So I'll, well, if I want you to do it, then maybe I can do it too. So we have X plus seven. I'm not gonna type any spaces, so I don't wanna waste any time. Let me put you right there. Okay, so when I do this, in my mind, I think five times X, which is five X, plus the five times the seven, which is gonna be a 35. They're all done. That's it, I'm, I, I am done. That's called the distributive property. You distribute, you pass out, you take this five and you pass it out multiplication style to the X and the seven. There's no space and that was starting to bother me. There you go. So that's it, five X plus 35. Now, if you were doing this in Schoology, you would type it like so. So you do five X plus 35, no spaces, but just to make it look nice, we're gonna have it with space. Remember, Schoology is kind of picky, so we have to do things uh, a certain way. Okay, so I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. I'm gonna copy and paste, and then do my next one right here. Okay, 1B, I gotta go 12 times a three. All right, so let's do that one. I better copy it first, 12. Now here's where I'm gonna get in some trouble here. Minus a one-sixth T. Ooh, that's gonna be tough to type. Hmm, I think the best way to do it is like this. Oh, gross. Fractions are just no fun for anybody. Okay, I think I can do this. Hold on a second. Let me get weird with it here for a second. Oh, look at that. What's up? Okay, that's a little bit better, but hey, what are you going to do? <clears throat> Doing the best I can. 12 times 3, I believe, is a number known as 36. And then 12 times a minus a negative 1, 6 is basically 12 divided by six, I think that's just two. Two, whoops, wrong number, big fingers. Two T, okay, I think I'm good. Let me double check, yep. 12 times three is a 36. 12 times a negative one six T is just gonna be a two T. All right, cool. Um, let's do a new one, do another one, a new one, another one. Move, oh, wait, what, what's going on? Go there, font, okay. All right, let's type some stuff. So we have brackets, we have a 0 0.4, plus a, wow, what are you doing? That's weird. Okay, 1.1, wow, come on fingers. Showing you my amazing typing skills. Yeah, I'm awesome at it. And then close the bracket times three. Okay, so that's what we got. So I'm gonna go three times a 0 0.4. It's basically 3.4 with a decimal, so it's 1.2. Why are you doing this to me? Just be nice. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go down here first until you're nice, until you're nicer to me. I'll put you back up there when you're done. It's like a little timeout for you. Okay, then three times u is gonna be a positive. Why is it positive? Because that's positive, that's positive. It's gonna stay positive. 3.3c, okay. 
there we go. Now I think the best practice <clears throat> for both this one and this one is you should always write it variable first, but for now we're just gonna kinda leave it be, so I'll, I'll add that in there. Best practice for 1B, if you were to type it in Schoology, would be minus 2T plus 36, that'd be best practice, copy paste. So I'll type all over again. And then best practice here would be to go to the variable first. I think that's the best, most accepted way to do these amongst the mathematical peoples in the world. Okay, double check. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Ooh, wow, look at you. You look not very friendly. All right, let's give it a try. Okay, we have a bracket. We have a 2y minus a 1, and we got to take u times a whole other negative y. Okay, so one multiplication at a time. There's technically one thing that might help students to help you with your brains and everything is think of it as a negative one y. Ooh, life hack, what's up? So treat this negative one with the numbers or take it, take it with the multiplication when you have the y. So here we go, we have a negative one times a two, it's gonna give me a negative two. Now if I take a y times a y, my y has to upgrade to a y squared, okay? And then I wanna get out of the super text, whatever it's called. And then I'd have a negative one times a negative one, so it'd be a plus one y, okay? It's just negative one times a negative one, so you'd have one, and then the y comes along to the right. So I don't really need this y, so best practice would be to do this, okay? There we go. So negative two, because it's negative one times two, y times y would upgrade the y to a second level y, upgrade. Remember, the only way to upgrade variables is to multiply them. And then the negative one times the negative one is a positive one, we don't see it. There it is, there it goes. And then the y comes along for the right. All right, so there we go, students. That wasn't too bad, I can write faster than I can type, so this video is a little long, but uh, eh, it's just the way it goes. So we're done with problem number one and got question number one for the one seven the distributive property notes.